Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you for the gift of life that you have, got, you, have to have given unto us. As we are going to go through the sermon, may you help us, Lord. Help us with all the children who are going to listen to this sermon. May you all understand and help us. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray, trusting. Amen. Happy, happy, happy Sabbath, children. And happy day. Welcome to today's Children's Sermon. I know by now you must be thinking about sailing to the highland. Ha ha ha, you are wrong. Not today. Give it another guess. Today, the boys and girls will have an opportunity to listen to a story by the Jerusalem Council. Even if we are not sailing much today, you wish to recall that this month we have been sailing together. Do you remember where our boat is? We have been to several islands. If you recall, because our theme has been the missionary tour. On reaching Antioch from Syria, on which place they sent forth in their mission, Paul and Barnabas took an advantage of an early opportunity to assemble the believers and rehearse all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The mis missionaries in Antioch was a great and growing number. As we go before, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Antioch. And our key text for today is Acts chapter 15 verse 11. And it says, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. With the addition of new people from different races and backgrounds, many wanted to live the lives they used to. Unfortunately, they could not live. Unfortunately, the world they changed and new normal took shape when Christ died on the cross and resurrected. Boys and girls, a question arose whether the Gentile converts must be circumcised first and keep the law of Moses as a way of testing their loyalty and devotion. Finally, the members of the church, fearing that a division among them will be the outcome of their continued discussion, decided to send Paul and Barnabas with some responsible men from the church to lay the matters before the apostles and the elders. Children, any time there is conflict in a church, we are to send responsible people to discuss the issue and not to take the loss on our hands, lest we cause division in God's church. The team was to meet delegates from different churches. All controversies was to cease until the final decision should be given in a general council. The decision was therefore universally, uh, universally decided and accepted by the, ch by the different churches throughout the country. Children! With every controversial issue in the church, God has set an example of how to resolve. Today, let us choose to be like the church in Antioch. This question was formally discussed in the assembly. Today, we have a replay of the proceedings. Welcome, welcome delegates to Jerusalem. We will discuss the progress of the ministry and the issues at hand. The biggest question before us is, should we make circumcision a requirement for all Christians to be baptized? The floor is open for debate. Any member can go first. Fellow members of the council, to begin with, it is great news that many in Antioch and Jerusalem have learned and accepted Christ. Well and good, we have no problem with that. But uh, however, 
I wish to, re to report with great concern that one thing is amiss. Each of them must undergo the cut in order to be saved. I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I raise a point of order. Fellow members of the council, first, circumcision symbolizes our loyalty to God. Circ baptism has the same sim significance of casting off the flesh and trusting in God. There is no use, there is no need of gentiles to undergo circumcision. Mr. Chair, I vote no. Fellow members of the council, you seem to suggest that you should drop some laws while upholding others. Is that the case? Will you make mention of the laws of Moses? Paul, do you have any point? Very well. Boys and girls, ceremonial laws or the laws of Moses were brought to the cross when Christ died for our sins. I know this to be true. I spoke to him after his ascension. He called me to preach the Gentiles and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mr. Chair, allow me to give the members of the other side a little education. These laws were ingrained in the very fabric of who we are. These are what guide us on how to live. It will be beneficial for the Gentiles to follow them. Sir, now, with your permission, I ask that you give direction because I feel like we're mixing these two issues. One is not associated with the other. On one hand is the issue of meat, while on the other is the issue of circumcision. We cannot allow the consumption of meat from animals that were strangled. No, it will confuse the rest of the faithful that we have engaged in, in, in adulterous activities. No, no, we refuse. Okay, what is wrong with consumption of meat from the strangled animals? Meat is meat, regardless on where it comes from. Order in the chamber, for the sake of record, according to the law, when beasts were killed for food, particular care was to be taken that the blood should flow from the body. Otherwise, the meat will not be regarded as a wholesome. God had given us this instruction for the purpose of preserving our health. The Jews regarded it as a sinful to use blood as an article of diet. We heard that the blood was the life, and that the shedding of blood was in consequences of sin. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for making that clear. Quite profound. I will stop using blood in the preparation of food. What? Do not worry. One step at a time. I will not use blood to prepare food because life is in the blood. Allow me, Mr. Chair, to ask, to ask my fellow colleagues one more question. What about, your sexually, what about your sexual immoralities? It is very clear in the word of God that thou shalt not commit adultery. Yet you people go prancing around in the name of free love when the commandment does not fit your lifestyle. What is so wrong with having multiple partners? Abraham and Isaac had multiple wives. Why can't we? They are our examples. By now, this honorable city should decide the case. If these people claim that Abraham is the example, and yet Abraham was circumcised. They too should be circumcised to be reminded of the promises that God gave to Abraham. Thank you. I've made an observation through the ministry. We have seen miracles and many people being given second chances. Ceremonial laws were a foreshadow of the Messiah's coming. Let us not backtrack. Did you say a foreshadow? Help us understand that. Children, get this point clear. All the ceremonial laws typified Christ. They were an example of what Christ will do and what he is still doing in heaven today. Those laws ended when Christ came to this world. Yes, Peter, go ahead. Thank you very much, James. Excuse me, brothers. You know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the gospel and believe. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors could be able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved, just as they are. So you better stop all this bickering and live as a family of faith. Boys and girls, we can just imagine how Satan wanted to take advantage of this situation. He first wanted the false doctrine of righteousness by works to succeed. But if it did not, Satan wanted doctrinal war to completely divide the church. This may be the greatest threat 
to the work of the gospel, yet seen in the early church today, and in most cases today. And Apostle Peter said, God did not discriminate between them and us, for he purified their hearts by faith. Uh -huh. My final verdict is as follows. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them on how to abstain from food polluted by idols, from fornication, from meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For the law of Moses has been preached throughout the city since the earliest times and is read on every Sabbath. I agree, James. Let's write a letter to Antioch, telling, telling them what the council have decided. Paul and Barnabas will be escorted to Antioch by Judas, Barsabbas, and Silas. To deliver the message, the God message was read to the multitude at a gathering in Antioch, and they all rejoiced for the consolation. The broad and far-reaching decision of the general council brought confidence among the Gentile believers, and the cause of God prospered. Children, when faced with conflict, let us look for wisdom from God, just like Paul did, because God is not an author of confusion, but of peace. All united in church capacity should be subject to one another. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, we cause that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Let's pray. Our mighty Father in heaven, we say thank you unto you for bringing us here today. Thank you for helping us to deliver your message to your children. Let them keep it in practice and also let us keep it in practice. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Sincere gratitude to you boys and girls for joining in today's debate. What do we have for next Sabbath? Exalting the cross. For now, bye! bye.